So welcome everybody. Uh, today we are going to relax and maybe even fall asleep as we practice yoga nidra with Amy Wolf. Let me tell you a little bit about Amy. Amy is a certified Iyengar yoga, meditation, Pilates, and prenatal yoga teacher with over 2,000 hours of formal training. Her teaching is influenced by nearly 20 years of practice, daily meditation, and dedicated study, including travel to India, and Amy teaches virtually, guiding individuals on all levels of their health and well-being. She also teaches, leads teacher trainings, global retreats, and corporate Corp eh, corporate workshops. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Amy. Welcome, and let's get started. Thanks so much, Sharon, and thank you all for um, for being here. So, uh, my my mother actually has Parkinson's, and my grandfather has Parkinson's, so or had Parkinson's. So I'm I'm just especially grateful to be able to be here. And to share what I think is one of the most powerful tools that I have learned in in my practice or in my in my learning for sure. Um, and I would be curious to hear what do you guys think relaxation is? Like, what does that mean when we're saying we're going to relax? Anybody? Yeah, I think it means um, to focus your mind on what you're doing. Nice. So just like a, a, a being present. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Releasing, and, releasing stress from your muscles. Releasing stress in your muscles. Yeah, absolutely. For your mind, of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So one of the, the main places that we actually hold tension is, is in our body, like quite, quite literally physically in our body. Mm -hmm. And some of you guys might, might notice like, oh, it's always my left shoulder or it's always my lower back or it's always my something. And that is almost almost always just a, a physical gripping that for whatever reason, our stress manifests in the clenching in that particular area. Um, so Sharon mentioned um, that we're going to relax today and, and maybe even sleep. And so I'm actually hoping you won't sleep. And let me tell you why. Have you guys all heard of our nervous system? Yeah? Yes. Our nervous system essentially has three states of being. And we're almost always in, in, in just one, and it's called our sympathetic nervous system. So you guys might know that more as a fight or flight response. So when we were, I think it's easy to think of it this way, right? So imagine that we were living in, in more ancient times and we had a, an immediate situation. Someone was chasing us or we were quite, quite we had to be on guard, whether we were running away, we were hiding, we were hunting, we were something. There was a, a stimulus and we had to respond to the stimulus in a really active way. So when we're in a fight or flight response, there's a bunch of physiological things that are happening within us that just happen naturally. So like our hormones change, um, our digestion changes, our heart rate changes, all of the, I'm not gonna get into like the, the science behind it, but a bunch of things internally change. And then there's something called our parasympathetic nervous system. And that's that's basically what I think is easier referred to as our rest and digest response. So we're in, when we're in our parasympathetic nervous system, we're basically recovering is, is really the best way to say it, right? So um, the hormones that are excreted change and basically our body is in a state of physical recovery. We don't know that state. The modern human is never in that state. We're either awake and we're active and we're reacting to stimulus or we're asleep, right? That's about it. Our bodies were truly not designed to only be in those two states. I have found that yoga nidra is so powerful precisely because it teaches us, it provides the space for us to learn how to rest without sleeping, which is honestly not so easy, right? It's just not so easy. So the first thing that I'll say is if you fall asleep, don't worry about it, sleep. The, the sort of introductory spiel is more than anything for you to, I mean, sure, think about it in the context of what we're, what we're gonna do together now, but 
mostly to think about it in the context of your life. See if you can find pockets of time where you actually cultivate a sense of rest that is different than sleeping. And that is when our body truly starts to heal. That is when the sort of hormones that exist in the fight or flight start to shift and we start to actually digest better. Our heart rate slows, our breathing improves. And, and, and truly it is a, a necessary state of recovery for our body. So before I kind of launch into yoga nidra now, does anybody have any questions about that little spiel? Make sense? Yeah, go ahead and unmute yourselves. Um, we're yeah. a small group, so just talk. Go ahead, Patrice. I, I, I was, <clears throat> when I'm, when I'm taking speech classes, I'm taking speech because I guess most people um, that with Parkinson's end up dying of pneumonia because they, they uh, breathe things in because the speech, um, speech is um, voluntary. I mean, I'm sorry, it's automatic usually. And um, we don't think about it. When we, we think about it and we plan to speak, then that part of the brain is not as affected by Parkinson's. Does that go for the same with the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system? That's an interesting question. Um, it is it is certainly not something that we we think about. It, it's not um, it's not reflexive, right? And and it's it's similar to what you're saying though, in that it is automatic, right? So yeah, so that would be like the fight or flight part. Yeah. So if you want me to get really into it, so it's the autonomic nervous system is really what I'm talking about. And it's a component of our peripheral nervous system. And that regulates involuntary physiological processes, which include heart rate, blood pressure, respiration, digestion, and sexual arousal. And yep. this, this division can go into three different state of being sympathetic, which is the fight or flight and parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest. And then there's a third one, but it's, it's, it's much less relevant. It's called enteric. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So the idea being that if we cultivate our ability to be in a state of rest, all of these processes that help our health, whether you have Parkinson's or not, are improved. And I have seen real, real shifts in my students who cultivate um, a yoga need or practice, let's say on a weekly basis or on a bi-weekly basis. Um, they, they truly, they're less stressed out. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you think of, of anxiety and stress and what it does to our body and, and yoga need really becomes a challenge. I'm sorry, a, a, a channel for us to learn to be in a physical state of ease, which we just don't know, right? We, we, we know clenching, we know gripping, we know reacting. We don't know letting go. Thanks for that question, Patrice. Anyone else? No. All right, great. Well then let's go ahead and get started. Um, Ashlyn, if you could mute Amy and Sharon, that would be great. So here's the main thing. You gotta be super, super comfortable. And the first lesson really in yoga nidra is you gotta take the time to make yourself really comfortable. And sometimes we're just like, nah, whatever, I'll be fine. No, no, no. You're going to be laying down for 30 minutes. And I want you to really, really take time to make yourself as physically comfortable as possible. Because if we're not physically comfortable, we can't rest. We're just spending all of our time thinking about, oh, my back or oh, my this. And so really, really take your time. So I'm going to set up with you. You do it with me. And if you have any questions, you're going to let me know. So I have a yoga bolster. If you have a yoga bolster, awesome. We're going to use it. If you don't, don't have a yoga bolster, Take like two couch pillows or take um take just like big thick things that mirror it as much as possible. So I'll show it to you. It's a cylindrical shape. It's on the firmer side. You don't want it to be too, too soft. And that's gonna be for behind your thighs. Okay? And then Sharon had mentioned that this is on a yoga mat. It, it could be a yoga mat, but honestly, if you had like a rug or if you had something soft, that would be even better than a yoga mat because the structure of a yoga mat will kind of make you stay a little bit closer. And relaxation is really a state of opening. So the, the wider you are, the better. So if you had a rug, just use a rug. You don't need to have a yoga mat, not necessary at all. 
Okay. And then the other thing is that I want you to have a blanket. Okay. So I want you to use a blanket instead of a pillow if possible. And the reason why, and I just want you to look at me for just one moment as I explain this. So this is also useful for you to just think about in life, but your head, right, is attached by your neck and your neck is part of your spine. So when we put a pillow underneath our head, what essentially happens is that we push our head forward and that actually disturbs the spine. It moves the neck forward, which then can cause, it just causes issues in the structure of our spine. So I have no problem with you putting a little bit of a pillow beneath you, but I just want you to think about this. We wanna to start to learn to bring our head back into space. And so you just want something soft beneath your head. So I have a yoga, a yoga blanket and I'm keeping it on the thinner side. So if you had that, great. And if when you get there, you're like, you know what, Amy, my head feels kind of weird. Then you can fold up the blanket and make it a little bit thicker, but only thicken it as much as you need to, to be truly comfortable. Okay, so you have your, your blanket back there. You have your bolster. And if you had like couch pillows or something like that, you could use two. So you have one underneath each leg. Now, before we lay down, look at your surroundings. Maybe you have to turn your lights off. Maybe the screen is going to like shine at you. So you could kind of dim the screen a little bit. Maybe you have an eye pillow. You could put your eye pillow on or just have it nearby so we could use it shortly. And you guys are all in different spaces and different temperatures, but we almost always get cold when we do yoga nidra. So I think it's really nice to have a blanket. Even a heavy blanket is really nice because gravity helps us, um, like, a you know, think of a gravity blanket. It, it, it's quite soothing to us to have something heavy on us. So have a blanket nearby. And then really like just think like, oh, do I want some socks on? Do I want a sweater on? Like think all those things through. And if you would, it, it's I highly recommend it's very nice to have a little bit of um, softness throughout the body. And then this is how we're gonna lay ourselves down. So you sit and you have your legs slightly bent with the bolster or the pillows beneath the back of your leg, just like this. And then when we lay down, you bring your hands back behind you like this. And this part's really quite important. I want you to move your hips like half an inch forward so that the top of the buttock is now going down towards the feet. And then you bend your elbows and you come down. My legs are still bent. You stay there with your legs bent. And then you just adjust the placement of the blanket or whatever sort of support you've taken for your head. And you want to be mindful that the support underneath your head is only underneath your head. So it's not underneath your shoulders. Okay, and then once you have that, so you adjust it so that it's not underneath your shoulders and your gaze should be directly up towards the ceiling. If your chin is a little bit dropped or if you're a little bit overlifted, you'll notice by where your gaze is. So just look at the, the ceiling. And then you're gonna take your thumbs and you're gonna place the thumbs at the back of your neck. So right at the base of your, of your hairline, it's called your occipital ridge. And you're just gonna pull that area up. So you're just elongating your neck, essentially. You're just pulling it up. And then you'll release your arms down. And then one by one, you'll lengthen your legs forward. Let the legs widen. The legs are gonna roll slightly out. So you want there to be a sort of release from the inner groin to the outer hip. And then one by one, widen your arms out towards the side. Turn the palms up towards the ceiling. And then just take a few moments there. Okay, and I'm wearing glasses. I see some of you are wearing glasses. So now is the time to take those glasses off because glasses kind of tell your body that it's in a state of doing. So any anything we can do to tell our body that there's no doing involved, that that's kind of what we're what we're going for. Okay, so let the the arms widen, let the legs widen. And Patrice, it's nice to take your hair down also. Anyone else who has their hair up because the the hair exactly, it will kind of disrupt where your head is resting on that support that you've chosen. Okay, and you want the pillow or the bolster or whatever you have to support the back of the thigh. And so like Linda, for example, your support's a little bit narrower. So it might be nice to have one leg on one pillow and one leg on the other pillow so that your legs can really be wide. Yeah, good.
Today, we're going to practice yoga nidra. It's a yoga technique used to bring about a deep state of relaxation. To provide physical healing. And to promote mental clarity. Take a moment now to make any last minute fidgets or adjustments you need so that you may feel completely settled, completely comfortable for the next 25 minutes. Joan, I would take off your shoes if you can, and Joyce, extend your legs if you can. Yes, yeah, straight out, exactly. Bring your awareness to your breath. Feel the subtle rise of your belly as you breathe in. And the subtle fall as you breathe out. Know that there's nowhere to be. There's nothing to do. Allow yourself simply to let go. And I'd like you now to set the following intention. And I will remain completely awake and aware during yoga nidra. I will remain completely awake and aware during yoga nidra. Repeat this intention to yourself in your head three times now. Return your awareness to your breath. Inhale, navel up. Exhale, navel down. Eleven. Inhale, navel up. Exhale, navel down. Continue to repeat this to yourself, counting down. If you become distracted,
simply begin again. Release that now. Bring your awareness to your right thumb. Feel the bones. The muscles. Feel it heavy, being pulled towards the floor by gravity. Notice any tension, any gripping. And allow yourself to let go. And bring your awareness now to your right index finger. Middle finger. Ring finger. Right pinky, notice any effort, any control, and allow yourself to let go. And all five fingers are now completely relaxed and in a deep state of healing. Letting go. Bring your awareness now to the center of your right palm. Right wrist. Forearm. Elbow. Right bicep. Tricep, right shoulder, all the while remaining completely awake and aware. Observe any tension. Any doing, and allow yourself to undo. Your entire right arm is now completely relaxed and in a deep state of healing. Letting go.
Bring your awareness now to your left thumb. Left index finger. Middle finger. Ring finger. Left pinky. Notice any tension, any control. And allow yourself to let go. All five fingers are now completely relaxed. and in a deep state of healing. Letting go. Anyone who is feeling discomfort in their back, try bringing your feet together, knees apart, on top of the bolster or pillow. Yeah, so soles of the feet together, knees apart like a butterfly. Bring your awareness now to the center of your left palm. Left wrist. Forearm. Elbow, left bicep, tricep, left shoulder, and all the while remaining completely awake. and aware. Observe any control, any effort. And allow yourself to let go. Your entire left arm is now completely relaxed and in a deep state of healing. Those of you with your knees wide, let's now do the opposite. Bring your knees together and your feet will be wide. If you're comfortable with your legs extended, stay there. Otherwise, legs bent, feet on the floor, on the floor, Patrice. Yeah, and then do knees together, feet wide. So Linda, if you want to try it, bend your knees one by one, feet on the floor. Good, and then take your feet wide and let your knees come together. Bring your awareness now to the soles of your feet, tops of your feet, ankles, calves, Let the muscles of your thigh spread. Your outer hips release. Letting go. Let's 
Bring your awareness now to your navel center. Sides of your waist. Feel your lower back spread. The muscles between your shoulder blades soften. Your collarbones widen. Is it heavy? Relax your throat, your jaw. Allow your eyes to release forward and down towards the center of your chest. The skin on your forehead smooth and even. Letting go. Bring your awareness now to your brain. Notice any trying, any doing. And allow your brain to rest, to release into the cradle of your skull. Letting go. Your entire body is now completely relaxed and in a deep state of healing. Allow your body and your mind simply to experience the state of quiet, of ease. Releasing completely. Surrendering fully. Remaining in this state of relaxation, I will name a series of objects. And I'd like you to bring an image of each object clearly into your mind. And then quickly release it. A glass of water. A pencil. A white t shirt. A light bulb. A box of tissues. A yellow highlighter. Release that now. I 
I'd like you now to set an intention for your yoga nidra practice. This could be an intention for the remainder of your day, or perhaps for this week ahead. It should be short, achievable, and stated in the present tense. Repeat this intention to yourself in your head three times now. Release that now. I will now begin a countdown to lead you out of your yoga nidra practice. Three. Know that the body and mind are self-healing mechanisms. Two, know that you will soon be going about the tasks of the day and that any benefit to your yoga nidra practice is yours to keep. One, take a deep breath in. Long, even breath out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Bend your arms now one by one, placing the hands on the front of your body. And if your legs are extended, bend them one by one so that the soles of the feet are onto the floor. Now stretch your right arm overhead and gently roll to your right side, finding a fetal position. And rest there on your side. Take a deep breath in. And take a slow breath out. And then press now into your left hand, into your right hand. And you'll gently press your way up to a seat. Feel free to sit up on a chair or sit up on a couch. But sit comfortably, whatever that, that means for you. Find a nice tall seat and just let the hands rest onto your thighs. Keep the eyes closed or just soft. And just take about a moment, just a minute here to just notice how you feel. Notice the quality of your breath. Notice the quality of your body. Observe your mind. And when we sit, it's much more difficult to be as relaxed as when we're laying down. But can we learn to, even when we're sitting, to relax the muscles of our body so that the belly is not gripped, the shoulders aren't gripped? Mm. 
And then take a full breath in. And a long breath out. And when you're ready, gently allow your eyes to open. Thank you all so much. Um, I really find that one of the most beneficial things we can do is have each of you, if you're so moved, share what, what your experience was, because it's not necessarily all roses. It's uncomfortable. Maybe you fell asleep. Maybe you got anxious. Like whatever it is that, that happened is, is great. And I do find it really helpful to share um, just so that we can talk about the concrete experience you had instead of some experience I'm trying to create. Joyce, did you want to share? I I noticed that um, my arms got so heavy, I couldn't lift them. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Oh, I love that. I love that. And it's, you know, we never notice that our arms are, are gripped, right? But we, we do, we hold on to them for, for reasons unknown, but we do. So yeah. it's, it's great. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Patrice, did you want to share? Oh, sure. Um, I, I fell a few days ago. And so I have some sore spots in different places, but, um, but once I got the legs situated better, I was, I was a lot better, but it, yeah, I did feel my arms were heavy and, and, I got a lot more relaxed than I usually do. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Linda? I would go through periods of being totally relaxed and then not being present. And then I would get totally relaxed again. And then I would not be present. You know, it was hard to completely relax. But there were moments, a lot of moments, that I, I would go back and forth, I, I found. That's, that's exactly right, Linda, right? And that's the practice is like, we kind of get there and then suddenly we're like, whoa, how did I end yeah. up here? somewhere yeah. so different? And then yeah. you come back to my voice, you come back to the focus and then you can kind yes. of get there again. And, and that's exactly it, just kind of flow in and out of it. And then those, those periods that you're in it become longer and longer. Yes. Guess, how long should we cut, uh, should we count down backwards? So I started at 11 um, and, and you'll notice that I, I, I did two, I did 11 and 10 with you. And then I let you go. And, and part of why I do 11 and 10 is it helps to pace you. So if you breathe right now without thinking about it, I bet you're breathing something like inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. It's quite, quite fast. And um, I actually, I teach a lot of breath work as well. And, and we're all over breathers. We all just breathe so quickly and so shallow. And so part of what I'm trying to do there is inhale, exhale, 11, inhale, exhale, 10. And so a lot of it is actually laying the, the groundwork for us to start to slow down. And once the breath slows down, it's much easier to get into a state of quiet. If you're breathing quickly, that usually is, it, it's telling your body there's something up. Like, we, whoa, 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 we're on alert. And so, and it's, it's a powerful thing. If we can control our breath, we can invariably change our state of mind. So if you just focus on maybe even five cycles of breath, breathing more slowly, the breath will then naturally start to get a slower rhythm. And your mind, I promise you, will feel different just with five breaths. So, you know, if, if you if you get to one, great. And then you start all over again. But I don't typically people get distracted. And then you start again when you got distracted. Oh, wow. Suddenly I was thinking about something else. Okay, well, I'm going to start at 11 again. Um, and it really is. It, it's It's less about the numbers, Joan, but that's a great question and more about what that it starts to focus your brain on something very simple and it gives you a very small task which is to remember the number and that helps focus us i must have fallen asleep totally <laughs> we'll re realize that all the time yeah yeah i i don't remember 11 10 whatever okay, okay. i i remember three two one but uh, yeah that was right at the end. And that's another nice thing about sharing is that you realize, oh, that happened? No, I was out for that. But I do remember this other thing. And that's that's also part of it is like, you start to kind of 
it's a really interesting state of being yoga nidra because you you maybe were asleep and then maybe you were actually awake and then maybe you were totally relaxed and then maybe you're a little stressed out like so much can happen in these 25 minutes um anyone else wanted to share i found it very oh sorry uh, sorry, I can't see who's speaking. So I'll start with Joyce and then whoever else is speaking can go next. It's like each part of your body is being focused. Like you focus on one arm or you focus on the other arm yeah. with the breath. Exactly. And who else was speaking? Oh, sorry, Marsha, go ahead. I have a wonderful voice for this. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, and, and, I think this is true for all people, but you know, so much of what happens to to us with Parkinson's is you get you get rigid, right? So, for example, my mom's toes—they were so rigid that they were curled under, and she's walking on her toenails. And so, this this practice I think is really particularly powerful for for us because it 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 is it is important to practice letting go muscularly. Right? I mean, it's important for all of us because we're all so tense and so gripped, but making time as, as, a, as a part of your healing, as a part of your self-care to just let go, to just muscularly learn, to just spread and release um, is, is really so, so important. Um, I try to do this with my mom a lot and it, it really does help her. Did she ever, she could get Botox for that. I have toe oh. curling. They give me Botox and it releases those. Marcia, she tried it like six times and it didn't help. Are they using some kind of ultrasound to see where the where they need to give the injection? Yes. Yeah, oh. the last two times they used that and it still didn't help. So she actually just has to LA, Dr. Johnston. Oh, uh, you know, we live in Mexico. She lives in Mexico. Oh, so. oh well, okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> so we did hear with a, a Parkinson's expert, but Anyway, she she was so frustrated. She just had surgery a few weeks ago, um, and it it strained out her toes. We'll see if she's able to walk. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Gracias, Amy. Thank Ay, you, Amy. Ay, un gusto, Rosa. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Um, it was really difficult for me because my son and my husband are in the in the living room, so they have the TV on. So. It was so frustrating, but at the end, I, I was relaxed, and I was following your voice, but it was really difficult. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's a really added, it's a challenging layer to it. Um, Something that yeah. I suggest to people who are at home with people, do you have earphones? It doesn't, it's, I hear that my husband, I am not in my house. My husband has a team, the football game on so loud I could hear it, even with my, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so it, anyway, if you have yeah. it. I find it's helpful to have the. Yeah. My husband was outside in the jacuzzi and then he came back through, and I'm like, I need silence. <laughs> and so he, he did it. <laughs> He's upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's great. Well, so, you know, I, I am. Um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I have a, a, a yoga nidra on my website. I also have a combination of other breathing techniques if that's interesting to be able to do some some recordings. But it, um, it, it's really a, a helpful practice for the mind and for the body, for all beings. Um, and I, I do think it makes a tremendous difference in how we feel and the strength that our body has to continue to heal. Thank you. Can you put yeah. the, give us your website, Amy? Yeah. So I'll, um, I'll put my email. So you live in Mexico. What part? You know, I don't really live anywhere. I was born and oh. raised in Mexico City. Oh, I put my phone number. That's not the right thing. <laughs> you guys can call me too. <laughs> um, I so I was born and raised in Mexico City, and you know, my mom has unfortunately taken a little bit of a of a of a nosedive health wise. So I was living in New York City. COVID came. I decided to come spend some time with my mom during COVID, and then I was able just to stay. And I haven't really resettled anywhere because this way I can spend quite a bit of time with her, which is really nice. Um, and I lead yoga retreats. So I kind of am there for a little bit and then I come back to see her and then I go somewhere else and I lead another retreat and I come back and then I teach virtually as well. So it's a, it's a pretty nice lifestyle. That's great. Yeah. What part of Mexico? Oh, in Mexico city. So my mom actually about 20 years ago moved to a smaller city called Queretaro. 
which is about two and a half hours north of Mexico City. It's it's near San Miguel de Allende for those people who know that. It's a little more of an American city that people know. But um, yeah, it's just a smaller city. Um, it's a little bit further north and just has like a slightly better quality of life. I would say it's just a little bit sort of slower. Um, yeah, so I, I hang out here with her and I just did a, a yoga retreat in her house. She's very sweet. She goes to her friend's house and I take over her house and lead a yoga retreat here. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, um, so my email is, is in the, in the chat, feel free to reach out to me if you just wanted to say, Hey, and anything else. And then my website will have the yoga Nidra, which is under on demand classes, and you can try it for a week. Um, I also teach live sort of mindfulness classes is what I call it. So we'll, we'll do yoga Nidra. Sometimes we'll do other breath work. Sometimes we'll do all sorts of things. Um, but that's another really, a thing that I love teaching. Um, and then, yeah, if you guys ever want to go on a yoga retreat, I'm your lady. Yoga for everyone. Okay. Any age, any shape. Well, maybe we'll do a, a, a Parkinson's yoga retreat. What do you think, Ooh. ladies? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I would love that. Okay. Yeah. Right, we will talk. Tell me where you want to go and, and I'll make it happen. Mm-hmm. Hey, San Miguel de Allende sounds great. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, let, let's Sorry. do a Mexico. Yeah, but Great. San Cristobal. San Cristobal. It is a San Cristobal. Are you from there? Oh, yeah, I, I live in San Cristobal. Yeah, in the mountains. Oh, I love San Cristobal. I haven't been there in like 10 years, Rosa. Oh, it's I love beautiful. It. So beautiful. Yeah, but truly, Sharon, anyone else, you guys put together a few people and I'm happy to, to make it happen. How many do you need? How many do you need minimum? Six. Okay. All right. Because we were talking about doing some kind of a retreat anyway for women. So uh, for women with yeah. Parkinson's, so we may add a few other things in, but yeah. That would okay. be great. terrific. Yeah, doing it here would be great because we'll do, it'll be, it'll be unlike any yoga you've ever done before. Trust me. And then okay. so we'll do a morning practice. that's a little bit more active and then we'll do more of a restorative practice every afternoon and there'll be great food. There'll be great yeah, conversation, great city to explore. Um, and I'll, I'll throw in a bunch of other kind of Mexican things. I, I just did a Temascal. Rosa, you know Temascal? Yeah. You want to tell people what it is, Rosa? Yeah, it's Temascal. It's, uh, it comes from the Mayan tradition, I think, or the Nahuatl. It's like a, a small room, well, for the Indians, the Mayan Indians, it used to be like a stone or a small room, and they put uh, rocks or stones in the middle. They put uh, leaves, like, I don't know how to say that in English. Like yeah, it's, hair. it's like a sweat lodge, but there's a, a real sort of healing ritual around it, and you have sort of like medicinal herbs that they bring in, and they're singing, and all of all of these other components to it. And it, it's just a invariably a very powerful experience. So yeah, Sharon, let me know. Five, six people okay. is all I need. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Ashlyn, do you want to put the slides back up? Thank you, Amy. This You're was so- wonderful. Oh, it was Thank such you. a pleasure to be here. Thank you all so much for your attention Thank you. and for having me. Thank you. Um, and I hope to, to hear from you all again. Thank so, you. Um, and Amy, you're welcome to stay on a little bit afterwards if you want, if anybody has questions, it's up to you. Uh, sure. Ash, next slide, Amy, uh, Ashlyn. Uh, too many Amy's and Ashlyn's. Okay, uh, next up, in two weeks we have What I Didn't Say with Matthew Moore. It's a two-person play and it's uh, based on a bunch of interviews he did. He He does have Parkinson's. And it's about a man who's diagnosed with Parkinson's and his wife and their relationship and how it changes over time. And it is a wonderful, wonderful show. They're going to record it. So we will be watching a recording of the show, which is about 30 minutes and then Q&A. And so if you have a care partner that you want to have share it with you, please sign up. I I think it's important for both, for everybody. Um, December 10th, we have Brian Pepin, who will be talking about Strive PD, which is an app that goes on your phone. Um, And then in December 17th, we have Karen Skipper, who will be leading us in song uh, with Trumbull Cliffs. And then in January, we've got more to come. And uh, we just keep 
things just keep coming. So uh, we're, we're gonna be busy. Next slide. Okay, so if you are new to Twitchy Woman, um, I try to add everybody to the email list automatically, but if I miss, just in case, you can sign up for the blog at twitchywoman.com or the Sunday morning, uh, Sunday mornings with Twitchy Woman um, so that you get notices about these events. We have a weekly newsletter. Uh, log on to twitchywomanevents.com. And then my daughter has re revamped my uh, logo and put it on some t-shirts and mugs and other things. So if you're interested in anything with Twitchy Woman, I know that Joan has several pieces and a few other people do. Um, you can go to the website, her website, it's called uh, Sweet Poppy Lane, all one word, sweetpoppylane.com. And actually there's a QR code there if you wanna take a picture of it, you're welcome to. Um, but you need to, uh, I'll have to I'll have to put the website up because there's I think it's slash twitchy because otherwise it's hard to find our stuff. You just click on t-shirts and it'll it'll pop up. And next slide. Uh, we have our mentoring program, which is going strong. If you we would we need more mentors. So if anybody would like to be a mentor, you'll find it's a wonderful experience to work with someone who is newly diagnosed and is totally at wit's end as to what to do. Um, I would, so if you're newly diagnosed, sign up to get a mentor. If you've been diagnosed three, four, five years ago and wanna help somebody else sign up to be a mentor. Next slide. And then we, we have our two chat groups are growing strong uh, Tuesday mornings, every Tuesday morning with Shelly Savoy. And that's open to anybody. And on Sunday mornings before our regular programs, we have Twitchies without partners. And next. And that's the end of our slides.